Man shall not live on bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out from the mouth of God. Matthew 4.4 4. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Sa pong pinagpalang araw para sa ating lahat, purihin ng Panginoon for giving us once again this wonderful privilege and opportunity where we can study His Word. As what the Bible mentioned, Thy Word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. Hindi po lingid sa atin na ang mundo po ay padilim ng padilim at kailangan po ng liwanag ng isang tao, lalo na sa kanyang araw-araw na pamumuhay at ang salita ng Diyos ang nagsasabing ilaw at liwanag sa ating daraanan. Purihin ng Panginoon and I would like to greet all our viewers. Salamat po sa inyong pagsama sa amin sa discipleship training tuwing Tuesday and Thursday, 8pm po ng gabi. And uh, thank you also for sharing this to your friends. And I know and we believe with all our heart that they are also benefiting from this uh, discipleship training. And please be a partner with us in sharing this to them in order for them also to hear the now word of God in, for, in, in the season. At binabati ko pong lahat ng ating mga taga-subaybay na nariyan po sa iba't ibang bansa ng mundo na ating, uh, na ating kinabibilangan, mga taga-US, pagpalain po kayo ng Panginoon sa inyong patuloy na pagsubaybay sa ating discipleship training. Nariyan po sa Japan, uh, sa Canada, sa Taiwan, sa Saudi Arabia, yung iba po nariyan po sa Qatar. Pagpalain po kayo ng Panginoon sa inyong pong, uh, patuloy na pagsubaybay. At ang iba naman ay mga nariyan po sa kanilang paglalakbay sa karagatan sa mga siman po natin na mga kaibigan at mga kapatid pagpalain po kayo ng Diyos riyan sa inyong uh, paglalakbay at paglalayag ang biyaya patnubay at mga laksa-laksang anghel ng Diyos ang, suma ang sumama po at mag-iingat po sa inyong lahat purihin po ang Panginoon at patuloy po akin rin pong welcome ang mga kapatid natin ano? sa mga sa, sa ibang bansa pagpalain kayo ng Diyos maging ang inyong mga Mahal sa buhay dito sa Bansang Pilipinas. At kayo'y patuloy na pasaganain ng Panginoon at pakaingatan ng Diyos. Pagpalain niya ang gawa ng inyong mga kamay. At patuloy po na kanyang buksan ang durungawan ng langit upang kayo po'y makatanggap ng mga pinagpalang biyaya mula po sa Diyos para kayo po'y patuloy ding magamit ng Panginoon habang tayo po'y narito sa lupa. And I would like to welcome also our viewers dito po sa ating minamahal na bansang Pilipinas. Ang Pilipinas po ay mayroon pong pitak or special na, na pitak or uh, position or pwesto sa puso ng Diyos dahil narito po ang mga mananamba, tunay na mga worshippers ng Panginoon in spirit and in truth. So, blessed po ang country o ang ating bansa at I would like to greet uh, Pleasant evening naman sa ating mga kababayan dito sa ating bansang Pilipinas mula GMA, Luzon, Visayas at Mindanao. Lalong-lalo na po dito sa mga taga-tagig, taga-sukat, Muntinlupa at sa Nubaliches at iba-iba pong mga kapatid dito po sa ating bayan sa, sa GMA at ganun din sa Luzon, sa mga taga uh, North, Nueva Ezeha, Lasam, di ko na po mabanggit yung iba, sa bandang Norte, Bulacan, pagpalain po kayong lahat ng Panginoon, at uh, ganun din sa mga taga Bicol, Laguna, at sa mga taga Katarman, sa Samar, sa Cebu, at ganun din sa mga taga Subaybay natin, na riyan, uh, sa Lapinig, you know, malayo na po yun, no? sila Pastor Rajela, you know, specifically, at pagpalain po kayo ng Panginoon dyan at ganun din sa mga taga Visayas, you know, sa Bacolod pagpalain kayo ng Diyos sa Cotabato, sa North naman sa Mindanao pagpalain kayong lahat ng Panginoon at patuloy pong pasaganain ng Diyos ang inyong ministeryo at ang gawa ng inyong mga kamay at uh, pagpalain din tayo ng Panginoon you know, sa lahat po ng mga sumusubaybay sa ating uh, discipleship training na ginaganap. Okay, mga taga Kamsor, Sorsogon, at uh, sa lahat po, mga taga Quezon, okay, pagpalain po tayong lahat ng Diyos. At sa gabing ito, bago tayo magpatuloy, I would like to ask everyone to join me in a word of prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and King, 
We thank you once again for giving us this wonderful privilege where we can study, hear, and meditate your word in our lives. And we thank you because tonight you're about to impart once again a powerful revelation that enable us, Father God, to do your will and to advance the kingdom of God on earth powerfully. At sa mga sandaling ito, ang balangin ko, continue to enlarge the capacity of our spirit in order for us to contain, receive the impartation that you're about to do tonight. And Father, I also come to you in the name of Jesus by faith in our Lord and powerful Savior, King Jesus Christ. We come against all sickness or sicknesses in the lives of your people. Those who are sick right now, receive your healing in the powerful name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Jesus Christ, our Lord and King, is more powerful than any kind of sickness. Even if people will tell you that you have no uh, chance at all, with God all things are possible. Receive your healing right now in the powerful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I also pray that the Lord will open the heavens for all of us, as we continue to grow and mature in our faith, that the Lord will open the windows of heaven, the, the heaven, para po ibuho sa atin ang napakasaganang biyaya at pagpapala to meet all our needs. I also pray that the peace of God, the joy of the Lord will flow like a mighty river over your life and your family. And those who are seeking for a job, I pray that the Lord will lead you to the best job that will provide your needs. Those who, are, those who are doing business, I pray that the Lord will bless the works of your hands. The Lord will lead you to the right partners in business so that your business will grow. And I declare and decree that no weapons form against you by the enemy, against your business and against the works of your hands. Nothing and nothing will prosper instead. Walang magpa-prosper na gawa ng kaaway laban sa negosyo mo, sa buhay mo, sa pamilya mo. And what I decree in Jesus' name that the works of your hands will be blessed by the Lord. Your businesses will grow, expand in the name of Jesus. And I pray whatever your hands touches will be turned into gold. Big sabihin, it will prosper in Jesus' powerful name. God, Holy Spirit, we continue to ask and pray that from the beginning till the end, of this study, speak to us in a very powerful way and give us, Father God, the capacity in the Spirit to receive the impartation that we will not just be listeners, but we will be doers of your word, building ourselves strong in your word so that whatever happens, Father God, we can stand boldly and declare that we are more than conquerors. Salamat po na marami. Receive your healing now. Receive your provision. Receive the peace and the joy of God. Hallelujah. And continue to serve God. Continue to follow God. Obey God all the way. This is our prayer in the powerful name of our Lord and King, Jesus Christ. And all the blessed people of God declare, Amen and Amen and Amen. Palakpakan po natin ang Panginoon. Purihin po ang Diyos. Hallelujah. Life without God is useless. Okay, as what Genesis 1, 26 mentioned, let us create men in our own image and likeness and let them rule. Lagi po nating tandaan ang buhay po na hindi pinagharian ng Diyos ay pinaglalaruan po ng kaaway. Purihin ng Panginoon at I would like to welcome you once again sa mga kabubukas pa ng kanilang Facebook. Live rin po tayo ngayon sa YouTube. So we are simultaneously doing our live streaming. One in Facebook and another one is in YouTube. So please do us a favor to share this message to your friends so that they will be able also to receive the impartation of the now word of God. The purpose or the main goal of this uh, discipleship training is to build a strong relationship between the pastors, leaders, and workers because we believe if the, re uh, if the relationship in the house is intact, the relationship in the house is uh, uh, accurate and uh, peaceful, 
there will be a a uh, acceleration you know in the spirit in fulfilling our god given mandate but kung ang relationship sa loob ng church ng pastor leaders workers and even members ay hindi po maayos ito po ang nagiging dahilan sa paghadlang or pagbagal ng pag-usad ng church papunta sa fulfillment ng kanyang destiny. So, ang School of Church Builders, sa pangunguna po ng ating spiritual mentor and director, Pastor Wilbert Bujal, ito po ang aming isinusulong upang sa naniniwala po kami na kung maayos po ang relasyon ng pastor, leaders, workers, and members, magiging madali ang pag-advance ng kingdom ng Panginoon through the church and that church also will reach her God-given destiny and fulfill her God-given mandate or assignment. So, purihin ng Panginoon at patuloy po ang aming hiling at dalangin ko na patuloy po na may saayos natin una ang relasyon. Because, uh, parang ano lang po yan eh, pag mayroon pong hindi pagkakaunawan, parang may gera po na nagaganap. Laging tandaan ng isang lugar na palaging mayroong gera ay hindi po progresibo. All truths are parallel. If in the church, the relationship is not intact, the relationship is not smooth and peaceful, then the progress of the church ay na, na, na babagal o actually hindi na nagpo-progress, nagiging stagnant. This is the main goal and purpose of this discipleship training. So, let me begin. Ano? Let us continue our study. Okay, entitled Biblical Principles that Empower and Establish Our Faith to Secure Our Victory. And we are in the subtopic entitled The Benefits and Blessings of Good and Accurate Sons. If there is spiritual father, the ideal relationship that should operate in the church according to Malachi chapter 4, verses 5 and 6, ang sabi po roon, ay, uh, Before the dreadful day of the, day of the Lord comes, I will send to you Elijah, my servant, and he will turn the hearts of the children to their father, and he will turn the hearts of the father to their children, and the heart of the children to their father, else I will come and smite the land with a curse. That is why it is very important po yung clear understanding natin habang patuloy tayong lumalago, lagi nating tandaan, God is a progressive God. Ang kapahayagan po ng Diyos, ang salita ng Diyos ay progresibo. Kaya habang tayo tumatagal sa ating paglilingkod sa Diyos, dapat lalo tayong lumalalim, lalo tayong nagmamature. And I'll be discussing it tonight sa inyo, later part of our study. So, lagi nating tandaan, all threats are parallel. Hindi po lahat ng anak nagbibigay po ng kagalakan sa kanilang mga magulang. So, alam po natin lahat yan. Kahit isa lang po pinanggalingan, isang nanay, isang tatay, pero different ang attitude. At hindi po lahat nagbibigay ng Kagalakan, mayroon ding iba nagbibigay ng uh, kalungkutan. That is why we study that, that the benefits and blessings of good and accurate sons so of their spiritual father. Kung tayo po'y nagiging maayos, nagiging ma ma kumbaga, masunurin, nag-honor, nag, nag respeto sa ating mga pastor eh, no? na bilang ating spiritual father, tayo rin po ay makakatanggap ng mga binipisyo at mga pagpapala buhat po sa ating Panginoon. So, the Lord gave me, okay, a 12-in-1 package of blessings and benefits, you know, bestowed upon you through the ministry of the carrier of your grace or your spiritual father, none other than your pastor. So, let's just do a quick review, you know, your pastor, number one, it's a 12-in-1 package, is number one, your pastor is the carrier of your grace. So, I've discussed it already for uh, uh, previous studies natin, that the grace of God is God's power and ability working in you for you to Become what God wants you to be. Another accurate meaning of grace, it is God's power and ability working through you for you to do what God wants you to do. According to Ephesians 3, 2, surely you have heard about the administration of God's grace that was given to me for you. So the grace of God that you need for you to do what God wants you to do, for you to become what God wants you to be, was deposited by God in the life of your pastor. In the case of Paul, he was the depository of God's grace for the Gentiles. So same thing, ang grasya ng Diyos na dineposito ng Diyos sa buhay na nagpapasor sa iyo ay hindi para sa kanya, kundi para sa iyo. And the only way for you to access the grace that you need, the intended grace of God for you, is to strongly and accurately connect to your pastor as your spiritual father. Number two, your pastor is the carrier of the now word of God for you. So as what we mentioned in our previous study, uh, it is not enough just to receive the word. 
but we should receive the now word of God. In John 6, 63, the spirit gives life, the flesh counts for nothing, the words I have spoken to you, they are full of spirit and life. When you speak about the now word in Matthew 4, 4, New American Standard Bible says, but he answered and said, it is written, man shall not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes out in the in other translation, in King James uh, translation, that proceeds out from the mouth of God. So it is a now word. When you speak about now word, it's the fresh word. Pag sinasabing fresh word, now word, it is the word for the season. Big sabihin, relevant messages that will address and uh, serves as a solution to every challenge or problem that you are facing. So, napakahalaga ho. Ang mga sariwang kapahayagan buhat sa Diyos ay idinipository ng Diyos sa taong nagpapastor sa inyo. That is why, karamihan sa atin, nagbabasa po tayo ng salita ng Diyos. There are times na hindi po natin naunawangan. Sa pagdalo natin sa iglesia, nung mangaral ang ating pastor, doon natin naisip at doon natin natuklasan. Ayun palang ibig sabihin yan. So dito makikita natin, every Sunday, your pastor is tasked okay, by God to declare, to preach, to teach the now word of God to you. That is why if you acknowledge Him and your soul and accurately connected to Him as your spiritual father, ano pa mangyayari? You will partake, you will receive the now word. At yung now word naman na yun, sariwang mensahe, yun ang gagamitin mo upang ikaw, ay makakop up or ma-overcome ang lahat ng pagsubok sa buhay mo. Number three, your pastor leads you towards your provision. In Psalms 23 verse 2 to 3, it says, He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He refreshes my soul. He guides me along the right paths for His name's sake. So dito pinakita sa atin, marami ang nagsasabi, The Lord is my shepherd. Patungkol kay Lord John. Pero gusto kong sabihin sa inyo, na the Lord shepherd us through a human shepherd. Marami pa ang nagsasabi, si Lord lang ang aking susundan. Ang problema mo kapatid, hindi mo nakikita ang Diyos. That is why God chose a man. Okay, a man, his servant, to serve as your leader. At ang sabi ni Pablo sa mga kanyang mga churches o sa mga kristyano na kanyang naturuan, imitate me as I imitate Christ. There should be a man, a pattern na susundan natin na siya namang mas mataas ang stature sa atin, sa iglesia, sa konteksto ng church, it is the pastor because he is the leader, you should follow, there should be somebody na sinusundan mo para mag-demonstrate, mag-model, mag-show, magpakita sa'yo ng pattern pa paano mabuhay katulad ng Panginoon. So, one way or one blessing na binigay ng Diyos sa ating mga pastor is He is able to lead you to wash your provision. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. Then your pastor also has the, has the grace to lead you to a peaceful uh, living of your life, you know, peaceful living. Okay, because the anointing, the power of God is deposited in him na siya namang kanyang i-re-release sa mga tao na kanyang pinapangunahan lalong-lalo na sa mga strongly and accurately connected to him. He refreshes my soul. Isa pa ito. Nag ang inyong pastor ay binigyan ng Panginoon ng kakayahan at binigyan ng grasya para tayo po'y madala sa renewal o revival sa ating spirit. Uh, marami ho sa atin na nakaranas po ng panlalamig, nakakaranas ng panghihina, but the moment you strongly and accurately connect to your pastor as your spiritual father, he is able to create that fire, that passion for God once again inside you through the ministry of God's Word. And lastly, He will lead you and guide you towards the right path. Ibig sabihin, sa tamang landas, pag nasabing tamang landas, landas patungo sa Diyos at sa salita ng Diyos. Your strong and accurate connection to the carrier of your grace and now word will not only secure your empowerment and protection, but it also secure your supply and provision that enables you to fulfill your God-given destiny. That is why this is how powerful, it is how crucial and important that we should have, that we should acknowledge somebody, okay, a spiritual leader or spiritual authority placed over our lives by God. Tingin po sa akin. The safest place in this world is to be under authority. Okay? spiritual authority or covering placed by God over your life 
will provide safety and protection for you against the attacks of the enemy. The moment na wala kang kinikilalang authority at leader sa buhay mo at ikay mananampalataya, ikaw ay exposed sa atake ng kaaway. That is why yung mga believers na they are just mindful of themselves, sila itong subject okay, ng atake ng kaaway. But the moment you belong to a church and you are under the authority and leadership of a pastor or servant of God and you acknowledge him and you strongly and accurately connect to him, then that uh, blanket of protection is over your life. Hindi ko sinasabing hindi na po kayo atake ng kaaway, but every time the enemy attacks you, that covering serves as your protection. That covering serves as your safety. Number four, he is God's hand forming Christ in you. At ito pong sinasabi ko na ang Diyos ay nagtapasaw sa atin gamit ang isang tao. Sa kaso ho ng mga Israelita, ang sabi rito sa awit 77 verse 20, Ikaw o Diyos ang nanguna sa bayan mong parang kawan. Who is the one leading? God. Si Moises at si Aaron, yaong iyong naging kamay. So dito makikita na natin, unti-unti na po, palalim ng palalim ang ating pag-aaral. Mula po sa pagiging, uh, sa iyong, ang iyong pastor ay career ng grace mo, career ng now word mo, leading towards your provision. This time, He is God's hand forming Christ in you. If you expect God to form you Himself, baka hindi mo kayanin. Bakit? Kasi kung ang Diyos ang magpuporma sa iyo, abay sa dami ng inaccuracies natin, baka hindi na tayo mabubuhay hanggang ngayon. But because God knows our weakness, God knows how to form Christ in us. Why Christ? Because only Christ defeated the enemy. Kaya siya yung pinuporma ng Diyos sa buhay natin because the moment we live a Christ-like life, then we are simply living a victorious life. Pakisulat niyo po ito. Living a Christ-like life is simply living a victorious life. Life. Okay? Maganda po yung ating pong pananahanan, yung ganyan pong kapahayagan. So, ang function ng mga pastor sa buhay ng isang mananampalataya, siya nagsisilbing kamay ng Diyos. Ano ang purpose? Galatians 4.19, My dear children, for whom I am again in the pains of childbirth until Christ is formed in you. So, ang trabaho ng pastor ay formahin si Kristo sa buhay mo na ang ibig sabihin sa sawikang Pilipino ay makikialam talaga siya sa iyo. So, do not be, uh, do not be, do not wonder why pastors are, uh, kumbaga, eh, minding our business. Why? Di mo po din sabihin sa pastor, do not mind your own business, do not mind my life. No, 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 no. Because trabaho namin mga pastor na purmahin si Kristo sa buhay mo at sa pagpurma kay Kristo, maraming kiskisan, maraming tapyasan, maraming rebukan, maraming uh, pagkukorek, training. Ito po yung bahagi namin. That is why pagka hindi po maunawaan ng mga mananampalataya, leaders, members, and workers sa loob ng church, kanilang mamimisinterpret ang kanilang mga pastor. And true enough, sa aking babagi ko sa iba't ibang lugar ng ating bansa, misinterpreted po ang mga pastor. Kadalasan, lalong-lalo na ng mga miyembro, mga leaders and workers na hindi po strong and accurately connected or hindi kinikalala yung kanilang authority. Watch me now. The moment you do not acknowledge the leadership, the authority of your pastor, you are simply, okay, you are simply declaring that you can do and reach your destiny on your own. Tandaan po natin, all we like ship. Ikinukumpara po ng Diyos ang mga mananampalataya o ang kanyang mga pinili sa tupa. At ang tupa, hindi kayang mabuhay mag-isa. Mabubuhay lamang siya kung kasama siya at siya ay mayroong kinikilalang pastol. Because the ship cannot defend himself. At dyan tayo, ikinukumpara. That is why we cannot rely on our intelligence. We cannot rely on our abilities. We cannot rely on what we carry. Why? Because we were compared by God or likened to a ship. At ang ship po, ang tupa, walang kakayahan mag-isa. Pag yan po yung nahulog sa isang butas ngayon, balikan mo bukas ang doon pa rin. Wala siya kakaya, di katulad ng aso, ng pusa, na kaya gumagawa ng paraan. And, uh, I cannot question that because that is what God uh, tells us. Okay, na ibig sabihin, eh, talagang kinukumpara sa tupa at mabubuhay lang ang tupa kung mayroong pastol na nag-aalaga, mayroong pastol na, nag, na nagpoprotekta sa kanya. Ganun din ang bawat mananampalataya. 
Nagkaunuan po tayo, magiging safe lang ang iyong journey towards destiny, magiging protected ka lang if you submit yourself to somebody na inilagay ng Diyos bilang iyong spiritual leader or spiritual covering. In the context of the church, it is none other than your pastor. In the context naman sa ating mga pastor na mga magagawa, that is none other than our spiritual mentor or spiritual father na kinikilala natin at hinahayaan nating magsalita, hinahayaan natin tayo ipagwikaan, pagsabihan, i-correct, i-train, minsan i-rebuke, para po tayo ay magiging accurate sa ating pagpapastor. Sa to say, marami po, ang sabi po ng aking mentor, marami po ang mga workers, mga ministers today, leaders, na mga fatherless. Actually, this is the, the generations where most of the ministers and workers are fatherless. But the Lord will not allow this uh, thing to continue. That is why He is sending uh, ministers, servants, who will preach and teach the accurate truth that this uh, generation should be a generation that is fathered by God through the fathering of their spiritual father, their pastor. Pagka hindi po mangyayari ito, marami pong magiging orphan. At lagi niyong tandaan, orphans, they have no, they are fighting for survival. Makinig po kayo mabuti. Pag ang isang lingkod ng Diyos ay nangmumuno sa isang iglesia na wala siyang kinikilalang spiritual mentor or spiritual father, siya po ay magiging orphan. At ang isang orphan, hindi niya kaya magpatakbo ng isang institusyon o lalo na ng isang simbahan na kanyang pangungunahan. Because orphan minister can only shepherd an orphan congregation. At pag ang mga ulila ay pinagsama-sama mo mga orphan sa isang lugar, yan po'y napakagulo. Yan po'y kanya-kanya. Yan po ay may kanya-kanyang interest at kanya-kanyang uh, labanan, siraan, kuhaan. Ito po ang nangyayari. I know you understand what I'm saying. That is why this message is very clear. That we need to submit ourselves to the authority that God had placed over our lives. It's, it, it, it simply means that a spiritual leader or a spiritual covering. Because that's the only way for a ship to be safe. Kaya nga nagiging safe ang isang uh, tupa sa piling ng kanyang pastol. That's the only way. The safest place for a ship is to be in the presence of his shepherd. Okay? So dito, ang trabaho ng pastor, formahin si Kristo sa buhay mo. Why? Because, God, why? Because God's goal and original plan for man is Christ-likeness. Romans 8, 29, For those whom God for new, or for those whom He foreknew, He also predestined to become conformed to the image of the Son. Christ-likeness. Why Christ? Look at Christ-likeness because only Jesus defeated the devil. Period. So, the, the, the ultimate goal of God, the Father, is to continue to reinforce the victory that Christ had started. Pag-ibig sabihin, our job is to destroy the works of the devil. Our job is to bring the good news to the people. Our job is to bring those who are in darkness into the marvelous light of God. But before we can do that, kailangan muna na tayo po ay magiging katulad ni Kristo. 1 John 2.6 Whoever claims to live in Him must live as Jesus did. Only Christ-like believers and a father generation is able to advance the kingdom of God on earth. Let me repeat. Only a Christ-like and a father generation is able to advance the kingdom of God on earth. A fatherless an orphan generation or a fatherless and, and, and hindi isla Christ-like, they cannot advance the kingdom. Why? Because people will not believe in what you say. Madaling magsalita. But your word and your life must be aligned and in harmony with each other. Kaya kahit anong sinasabi ng iba, napakagana sinasabi, hindi po nakikita ang salita. Please, tumingka sa akin. Ang salita ay hindi nakikita. Ang nakikita ay yung nagsasalita. In short, your message is how good it is, no matter how good it is, people will still look at the quality of your life. And if they, they don't see a Christ-like life in you, 
So what will happen? Your life or your message will be will be counted as, you know, sorry to say, parang garbage lang siya. Why? Because ibang sinasabi, yung nagsasalita, ibang sinasabi, iba naman ang pinamumuhay. That is why Christ-like life, yun ang goal ng Panginoon at original na plano ng Diyos na maibalik sa tao. Because Jesus, when He was on earth, when He ministered on earth, what He says, He do. Nagkanoan tayo. Ano sinasabi niya? Ginagawa niya. That is why every time He preached and teached the word, people were astonished. Why? Because lahat ng sinasabi niya, ina-apply sa buhay niya. Hindi ba nakikita yung sinasabi niya, naririnig lang, pero mas matalas at mas kumbi-kumbinsi ang kanyang pamumuhay. Same thing with us. That is why we cannot win people to Christ. Why? Because what we say is different to what we do. That is why the only way para ho mag-parallel, para ho mag-align, para ho maniniwala ang mga tao sa ating mga pinapangaral, kailangan hindi naman natin ito pinapangaral o pinapakinggan. Dapat ang lahat na narinig, ating ginagawa, ina-apply. And the moment we apply, What we've heard, ano mangyayari, we become a spiritual son to our spiritual father. We are submissive, we are obedient, and we respect, honor them, and support them. What happened? Then the grace of God will operate in our lives. Ano pa? The now word will operate in our lives. We will be brought by our shepherd, our pastor, to the green pastures, to, the, to, to, the, uh, to a peaceful life, and he refreshes the passion and hunger for God will be created inside us and we will be led to the right path. Kasi nasabing tamang landas, landas patungo sa Diyos, patungo sa gawain ng Diyos, patungo sa salita ng Diyos, patungo sa pamamaraan ng Diyos. At pag ganitong klase ng buhay meron tayo, kahit hindi na po tayo magkasalita, tuwing makikita nila, people are attracted to a Christ-like life. Ulitin ko, a father and a Christ-like and a father generation are the only ones who is able to advance the kingdom of God on earth. That is why if you are fatherless, you are an orphan, wala kang kinikilalang leader, if you are a minister just like me, at wala kang kinikilalang spiritual mentor, spiritual father, then it is impossible for you to advance the kingdom. Why? Because you will be right on your own eyes. Wala tayong sinasubmitang authority and we want our people to follow us Pag matalino sila tatanungin nila, kami gusto mong sumunod sa inyo, pero sinong sinusundan nyo? And that is a big question. Ganun din sa mga miyembro. Your spiritual father is another than your pastor. Siya ang career ng grace mo, ng naward mo, at siya magdadala sa iyo sa iyong provision, at siya rin ang magpiporma kay Christo sa buhay mo. If you will not acknowledge your pastor, and you will not submit to the authority of your pastor, then Christ cannot be forming you. Watch me now. If in the life of a, if a believer, in his life, hindi maporma si Kristo, yan palagi kong sinasabi, ang hindi, ang buhay na hindi pinaghaharian ng Diyos, pinaglalaroan ng demonyo. That is why marami hong mga nagkiklaim na mananampalataya. This is the this is the big problem na hindi ho ma, masagot-sagot at hindi matrobulsyot ng mga mananampalataya. And I hope and pray that you will share this message to your friends, to your families, para makita niya paunawahan na kailangan maunawahan natin na ang buhay natin dapat katulad ng pamumuhay ni Kristo pinaghaharian ng Diyos para wala ng demonyo maglalaro sa buhay ng isang mananampalataya. The devil doesn't care if you're a believer for how many years. The number of years doesn't matter to the devil. What matters most in the eyes of the enemy that they will enable him, okay, that will not enable him, okay, to touch you and to inflict all his fiery darts against you It's none other than a Christ-like life. Pinangingilagan po at iniiwasan, pinatakbuhan ng demonyo ang mga taong nabubuhay katulad ni Kristo. Kaya ito ang ultimate goal. Kung sino man nagkasabi sa inyo sa Diyos, dapat mabuhay katulad ni Jesus. Ephesians 4, 22 to 24, You were taught with regard to your former way of life to put off your old self, which is being corrupted by its deceitful desire, to be made new in the attitude of your minds. To put on the new self created to be like God in true righteousness and holiness. Ang Panginoong Isa Kristo po, ang katangi-tanging uh, imahe ng Diyos. In Colossians 1.16, He is the image of the invisible God. 
Kaya nga nung si Kristo bumaba sa lupa, nagkatawang tao para magiging pattern nating mga tao. Kaya kung po nalulungkot, kung tayo po'y matagal ng kristyano pero hindi natin ginagawang prioridad na mabuhay katulad ni Kristo, bagkos inuuna natin ang ministeryo, that is really a tragedy. Kaya nga po, marami in love sa ministry pero hindi babad sa intimacy. Lagi niyong tandaan, kung gusto niyong kasulat, a quality and quality intimacy will produce a quality ministry. If your ministry is, you are no longer serving God with gladness, pressured ka, stress ka sa ministry, abay magtanong ka. Sapagkat ang ministeryo, ang paglilingkod sa Diyos, ay mayroon dapat kagalakan. Bakit walang kagalakan? Una, baka wala kang kinikilalang spiritual mentor, spiritual father, wala kang spiritual covering. Pangalawa, hindi mo rin malid ang mga miyembro mo sa maayos at accurate na paraan kasi wala ngang nag, wala ka rin covering. And how can you cover somebody if you yourself has no covering? Nawa itong gabing ito ay magbuka sa atin sa isang napakalalim na pagbubulay-bulay at pag-iisip. At nawa, kung kayo po'y kinakausap ng Diyos ngayong gabi, gumawa na tayo ng desisyon. Connect to the person that God had placed over our lives sa mga nasa denomination. Okay? Maaari po kayo nasa denomination at kayo mismo, galing sa inyong order sa taas, minsan mayroon mga binababa sa inyo pero hindi po ito nagsasatisfy at hindi minsan nagiging, ano, nagiging, uh, uh, kumbaga, natutugunan ng iyong personal na spiritual na pangangailangan. Mayroon po mga pinaprovide ang Diyos na mga ministro, mga tao na mas mataas ang stature sa iyo, na every time na sila mag-share, magsalita, ikaw po ay nabibless, ikaw po ay nabibuild, lalo tagit sa lahat, na overcome mo sa pamamagitan ng salita ng Diyos na narinig mo mula sa mga taong ito. Then they are. Okay? Pwede, pong, pwede ba yung pastor na outside our denomination, yung aming magiging source ng spiritual nourishment? Pwede po. Because you cannot, you cannot uh, put that in a box. Ang akala kasi natin, mula lang sa denomination yung supply. Marami na pa kong kilala na mga nasa loob ng denomination, but the supply given to their denomination is not enough for them to break through. Bagkos na makareceive sila sa, ng teaching mula sa labas, doon sila nag-break through. But again, in the school of church builder, we do not recommend for you to leave. But rather, show to your people, share to your group, kung anong ginawa ng Panginoon sa buhay ninyo. And you will be a blessing to your denomination until one day your denomination also break through just like you. Purihin po ang Panginoon. So why we need to strongly and accurately connect to our pastor or spiritual father at all times? Kailan magkoconnect? At all times. So dito, pinakita natin, uh, number one, uh, why we need to strongly and accurately connect to, the, to our pastor or spiritual father at all times? Number one, he is because he is God's gift to the church, to lead these people. Dito pinakita sa Ephesians 4.11, Now, these are the gifts Christ gave to the church, the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, and the pastors and teachers. So, napag-usapan na natin yan. Nung nakaraan, ang inyong pastor ay regalo ng Diyos sa inyo. Lagi niyong tandaan, regalo ng Diyos ang pastor sa church. Kaya nga ho, pag walang ganitong pangangaral, nagiging lawless ang maraming mga miyembro sa loob ng churches. Why? Because they do not know the truth. Hindi rin natin masisisi yung iba kung bakit ganun ang kanilang attitude because kung walang katotohanan silang narinig, pakaisipin nila yung kanilang maling ginagawa ay tama. Now, to prove to you that your pastor is God's gift, bukod po sa Ephesians 4.11, in Jeremiah 3.15 it says, New International Version, Then I will give you shepherds after my own heart who will lead you with knowledge and understanding. So dito, clear na. Ang inyong pastor ay regalo ng Diyos para sa inyo at sa simbahan ninyo. Kung ito ay galing sa Diyos, ibig sabihin, siya ay mayroong napakahalagang papel na gagampanan sa buhay ng mga tao na itinalaga ng Diyos at tinawag ng Diyos sa church na inyong kinabibilangan. His main task is to provide and lead God's people to the knowledge and understanding to the word and ways of God. Marami pong mga mananampalataya hanggang ngayon hindi makasunod sa salita ng Diyos. Kung hindi mo masunod ang salita ng Diyos, lalong hindi mo masunod ang kaparaanan ng Diyos. 
Kaya nangyayari, puro taliwas ang ginagawa. Kaya sa halip na maging pagpapala, nagiging kapitisuran. Ito po ang minsahe ng Diyos para sa bawat isa. Kaya kailangan tayong mag-connect strongly and accurately sa nagpapastor sa atin or sa ating spiritual father at all times so that the supply of knowledge, the supply of understanding about the Word of God and the ways of God will continue to flow and to continue to be imparted in our lives so that we will conduct our lives pleasing and acceptable before God. The way we treat our pastor or spiritual father and what we do to him testifies and determines how we treat and honor God in our lives. What we do to his representative is what we do to him. So nawa, ito po'y napakalinaw na. Ang ating mga pastor o ang inyong mga pastor ay representative ng Diyos sa church ninyo at sa buhay mo. His job is to lead you, to represent you before God, and to represent God before you. Nagkaintindihan na tayo. Kaya ganun siya kahalaga, kaya nga nirigalo siya ng Diyos, the church, at sa buhay mo. Ngayon, because of lack of knowledge, pag sabing lack of knowledge, ignorance, my people perish. Kaya marami ho, na kung maglibak, magslander, magbakbite sa kanila mga pastor, ganun-ganun na lang. Because they do not know. Ignorant nga eh. That is why maraming napapahamak yung iba, nangamatay na lang. I, I, I am telling the truth. I've been in the ministry for 30 plus years. And I saw people, how they slander, how they go against, how they fight their pastor. Namatay na lang ho, sa karebeldean. Tapos na o, ang patotoo nila Cora, nila Sheba, sino pa ba yung mga nagrebelde sila, Ananya, Safera, sino pa yung mga nagrebelde sila, Judas, tapos na. Ang kanilang mga maling pamamaraan at patotoo ay tapos na. But because of ignorance, lack of knowledge, marami ho ang naka, napapasok pa rin ang espiritu ni Judas Espiritu ni Dimas, Espiritu ni Cora, Espiritu ni Miriam, ni Aaron. Ito po ang delikado eh. That is why in the School of Church Builder, dinidiinan namin that you should know your place in the church. There are, only, there are only two kinds of people in the church. A leader and a follower. Dalawa lang. If you are the pastor and you are the leader, take the lead. Do not allow somebody or anyone else to lead your church. Do not allow any leaders na pinipili o na, na pili sa church mo na mag-lead kasi you are the one responsible. Now, kaya nga dito papasok, kung wala kang spiritual father, wala kang spiritual mentor, pwede kang, okay, pwede kang magiging sunod-sunuran sa mga nangunguna siya because you do not know what to do. Kaya marami rin mga, mga, minister, mga ministers of the gospel na nagiging compromiser. And that is not the will of God. Because you will be answerable before God. Now, kung ikaw naman ay isang mananampalataya, membro ka sa church, ikaw man ay leader, worker, or member, your job is to follow. You are not the leader. Kaya nga, do not even attempt to take the leadership from your pastor. Because you are placing, positioning yourself in a danger zone. Because God is a God of protocol, He is not a God of confusion, but He is a God of order. Maglalagay siya ng isang tao, gusto mo man yan o hindi, hindi ang Diyos nagkamali sa paglagay ng pastor sa church ninyo. Nagkaunawan tayo. So, ibig sabihin, you need to follow. Na huwag kayo matakot kung susunod kayo, o papa na pag inaccurate yung pastor namin, na tinuro ko na rin ang nakaraan. Ang church ay bride ng Panginoon. Jesus Christ is the bridegroom. The church is the bride. At kailan man, hindi ng Diyos ipagkakatiwala ang kanyang bride sa abusadong pastor. Kung abusado man, kaya sa ng Diyos tanggalin, worst patayin. Di ba napag-usapan na natin yan? Kaya wala dapat inakatakutan ang mga mananampalataya pagdating sa submission sa kanilang mga pastor. Kasi ang Diyos, mahal niya ang church. Namatay ang Diyos para sa kanyang church. Namatay ang Diyos para gawing banal ang kanyang simbahan. Gamit ang isang pastor. And we know na mayroon din namang mga inaccurate, katulad ni Eli. 
Eli was an inaccurate leader. King Saul or King Saul was an inaccurate leader. What happened to them? Parehas mo nangyari sa kanila. Sila po'y namatay o pinatay ng Diyos. Kaya nga ho, sa balancing turong ito, hindi po ito pro-pastor at hindi rin po ito pro-member. Ito po ang biblical protocol. Ito po ang biblical principle. If you are the pastor, take the lead even if nobody will follow you because God is the one commanding you. God is the one giving you the mandate and do it even if others will not support you because ang suporta ng Diyos, higit pa sa sapat para magawa mo ang pinapagawa ng Diyos sa iyo. And never napababayaan ka ng Panginoon magkapadala siya ng mga tamang tao para suportahan ka kung ayaw sumuporta yung iba. Kung kayo naman ay mga may pinag-aralan, mas may pinag-aralan, mas may uh, magandang kalalagayan sa sosyudad kaysa inyong pastor, hindi yan sapat. Para i-overpower mo ang pastor, may i-overruled mo siya. Kailangan gamitin mo ang iyong katalinuhan, gamitin mo ang iyong kayamanan, gamitin mo ang iyong galing at abilidad para tulungan ang pastor mo. Diyan, nagiging maganda at pinagpala ang iglesia at nagiging ilaw at asin sa inyong komunidad. But if you will keep on fighting against your pastor, Cora attempted together with Abit, uh, Abiram, they fight or they fought Moses. The Lord killed them. How? Binukas niya ang lupa at sila kinain ng buhay together with their 250 leaders na kasama nila. Wala hong patutunguhan ang mag sa pastor. Si Saul, nag sa Diyos, pinatay rin siya ng Diyos. Sino pa nag -rebelde? Miriam, kapatid at ate ni Moises. Akala niya, kinakausap yun ng Diyos. Di niya alam, o talagang ignorante nga, may people perish because of lack of knowledge, ignorance, nakalimutan niya na siya, kaya lang siya kinausap ng Diyos, inanoint ng Diyos, dahil kay Moises. Nung siya na kung, nung siya ay dinapuan nung ketong, sinong nag sa kanya para gumaling? Si Moises din. Kaya nga, nonsense, useless, foolishness. Ang lumabang ka sa pastor mo, kasi at the end of the day, pag naghirap ka, pastor mo pa rin ang kailangan mo. At napakahirap lumapit at tumawag sa pastor ng tulong, lalo na pag inaaway mo siya. Malinaw? Eh, ganun din sa mga pastor. Pag tayo naman ay hindi nagiging maayos sa ating pamumuno, God, God will deal with us. Lagi yung tandaan, God is love, but God also is just. Sa mga hindi po tama ang pamumuno at pagpapastor, i-deal din po ng Diyos ang mga pastor. Katulad ni Eli, hindi niya na natatakbo ng maayos ang templo at nagiging lawless ang kanyang mga anak na si Phinehas at saka yung isang kapatid niya, pinatay sila ng Diyos. Si King Saul, Pinili man siya ng mga tao at inaproba ng Pino na siya maging unang hari para lang pagbigyan yung kanilang kamangmangan. Ano nangyari? Pinatay din ang Diyos. Nagiging labanan pa yan sa, sa Bible School. Si, si, si Saul ba'y nagpakamatay o pinatay ng kanyang aid or katulong? Hindi. First Chronicles, basahin nyo 10, 13 to 14. It was God who killed Saul and gave the kingdom to David. Mga kapatid, you should know your position in the church. If you are not the pastor, your job is to follow and support the one leading. If you are the pastor, do not compromise. If people will support you, good. If they will not fail, you will continue to lead and implement and preach the word without compromise. Why? Because it is not your church, it is God's church. That is why napakalaga ho, the way we treat what we do to his representative is what we do to him. Do you love your pastor? Do you honor them? Do you respect them? Do you support them? If that's what you do, then you, you are doing it for God. But if you disrespect, dishonor, you rebel against them. You're not doing it to him alone. You're doing it to him. Kaya nga, those who honor God's representative will surely not lose the rewards. Sa pag-usapan natin, Matthew 10, 40-42, Anyone who welcomes you, welcomes me. And anyone who welcomes me, welcomes the one who sent me. Pag tinanggap mo ang pastor mo, tinanggap mo rin na nagpadala sa kanya. Sino nagpadala at nagbigay? Ano sabi sa Jeremiah 
I will give you shepherd after my own heart. Nakita niyo? Pag tinanggap mo ang pastor mo, tinanggap mo ang Diyos. Pag nireject mo ang pastor mo, nireject mo rin ang Diyos. Yan ang nakalagay sa Bible. Parang iba sa inyo ngayon lang nakapakinig. Iba sa inyo, baka naligaw lang kayo at na-browse nyo lang, napakinggan nyo ito. Hindi po aksidente. Kinakausap ka na ng Diyos. Lalo na kayo po na hindi nagpapasakop sa inyong mga pastor. Hindi nyo kinikilala kanyang leadership. Kayo, na feeling ninyo mas matalino kayo at may pinag-aralan at may magandang kalalagay sa syudad, ito ang pangungusap ng Diyos para sa iyo. Maaring kayo po'y kilala at sikat sa inyong iglesia, pero deep inside your spirit, I'm not talking about your heart, I'm talking about your spirit, something inside is empty. Something inside na parang may kulang sa iyo. Alam mo bakit? Your submission to the authority ay hindi mo ginagawa. You believe in your mind, Okay, that you are serving God. But in reality, you are going against Him. And that is very ironic. Kailangan maitama yan ngayong gabi. Whoever welcomes a prophet as a prophet will receive a prophet's reward. And whoever welcomes a righteous person as a righteous person will receive a righteous person's reward. And if anyone gives even a cup of cold water to one of these little ones who is my disciple, truly I tell you that person will certainly not lose The reward. Nakita niyo, kahit simpleng mananampalataya, binigyan mo ng malamig na tubig in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, hindi ka mawala ng reward. Eh, pastor pa kaya? Kung sa pastor mo ginawa, hindi po isa, lima, sampu, kundi napakarami na pong patutuo na sa kanilang pakikinig sa discipleship training at ginawa nila ito sa kanilang pastor. Things in their lives change, even in their career, even in their way of life, even sa kanilang mga careers, even sa kanilang personal na pananampalataya, nagkaroon po ng pagbabago. Bakit? Because obeying the Word of God accurately will position your life ready to receive the blessings of God from heaven. Why we need to strongly and accurately connect to our pastor, spiritual father at all times? Because God tasked him to equip and build us strong in the Spirit. Isa ho sa major work o task ng pastor mo, i-equip tayo, i-build tayo strong in the spirit. Why? Because our enemy is not flesh and blood, but we are fighting against devils, demons, spirit. At ang pastor mo ay may kakayang, kaya pag nag-connect ka sa kanya, pwede kanyang ma-equip at pwede kanyang ma-build strong in the spirit. The responsibility, Ephesians 4.12, is to equip God's people to do His work and build up the church, the body of Christ. When you speak about equipping, it simply means to prepare to train, to arm, and supply. I-prepare tayo para tumibay, i-train tayo para tayo ay magiging uh, malakas at tayo po'y armasan ng mga katotohanan na every time the devil will attack and, and uh, shoot us with his lies, we are armed with the truth. And when the lies and truth, okay, magkakaroon sila ng labanan head on, isa lang ang palangin bumabagsak. The truth always prevails and the lies of the devil were dis are destroyed. He will supply us with principles. He will supply us with the now word of God so that every time we will walk in the valley of the shadow of death, we will fear no evil because we have God with us. Let us give them the free hand to circumcise our hearts through the powerful ministry of the word of God, through teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training us into all truths. Bigyan natin ng laya ang ating mga pastor. Because if we will go against the dealings of our pastor, every time he teach us, every time he rebuke us, every time he correct us and train us, palagi tayong nagireklamo, palagi tayong uh, nasasaktan, at palagi tayong uh, lumalaban, ang pag-equip sa iyo at pag-build sa iyo strong in the spirit ay hindi niya magagawa. And if you are not equipped and you are not built in the spirit, nagiging sitting duck ka para sa demonyo. Kaya maraming mga mananampalataya, pag kinukorek ka ng kanilang paso, pinagkasabihan na, nagtatampo na, umaayaw na. Ano mga yari sa iyo? Unequipped. Anong tawag sa iyo? Weak na believer. Lagi niyang tanda. Ang demonyo, ayaw niyang ma-equip ka at ayaw kanyang ma-build in the spirit. Because magkakaroon siya ng hard time to attack you, to destroy you. Pero pag ikaw ay unequipped at ikaw ay weak, napakadali. Makanig kayo mabuti. Ang pinakamadaling talunin na kaaway ay yung mahina. And if ikaw ay unequipped, mahina ka sa spiritual. Chicken ka lang para sa kaaway. Kaya palagi ko sinasabi, those 
who are adequate, those who are rebellious to their spiritual leaders and they do not follow and obey, they will be food for the enemy. At yun ay masakit na salita, pero yun ang katotohanan. Kaya the devil can easily inflict attacks, mabilis na ma-destroy ang iyong mga pinaghirapan, maging ang iyong buhay, although you are already a believer, kaya nga mayroong discipleship training. Inaayos natin to. His priority is to build the unity in the faith of God's people. Number three, why we need to strongly and clearly connect our spiritual father because his priority is to build the unity in the faith of God's people until we all reach unity in the faith. Be an instrument of God for the unity of God's people in the house of God to secure his blessings. In Ephesians 4 to 6, it says, Make every effort to keep the unity of the Spirit through the ban of peace. There is one body and one Spirit, just as you were called to one. One hope, when you were called to one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is over all and through all, in all. Through all and in all. Mga kapatid, if you become a spiritual son, spiritual daughter, your spiritual father, your pastor, you will love the people. Ang mga anak sa pananampalataya, submissive, connected sa kanilang spiritual father, their pastor, hindi sila ang pinagmumula ng gulo sa church. Bagko sila ang mga peacemaker sa loob ng church. This is why their spiritual father, their pastor, ay hindi na naistorbo kung mayroong mga issue sa loob ng church, ang nag-fix, ang nag-aayos, mga anak. Kaya pag strong na kaya connected ka kung sinong mahal ng pastor mo, kung mahal niya ang mga tao sa loob ng church, mahal mo rin sila. Pero madalas so sa pinagmumula ng sigalot, pinagsisimula ng gulo sa loob ng church, yung mga hindi connected, mga disconnected, mga rebellious sa kanilang pastor. At ang malungkot na bagay dito, marami sila. At mapapansin mo, pag mayroong naipangaral ang pastor na tinamaan sila, nagkasama-sama sila. Para silang club 666. In John chapter 6, verse 66. Ang sabi ng Bible, when the Lord Jesus Christ preached a very powerful and short message, people Ang sabi, many of his disciples left him because they were offended. Ang tawag sa grupo ng mga yan, Club 666, The Fellowship of the Offended. Kung patuloy ka pa na offend sa mga matatalas sa pangangaral ng salita ng Diyos ng pastor mo, you are still immature. And immature believers has no right to receive their inheritance. At ito ang gusto ng demonyo na palaga kayong immature. Pero kung ngayong gabi mag ka, Gusto ko, Lord, mag-mature. Gusto ko makuha at ma-access ang inheritance ko. Then get ready to receive sharp, offending, strong messages para ma-build ka strong in the Spirit. And you will be a contributor. You will be an asset for the unity of the brethren in the church. Ang sabi po ng Psalms 133, Verses 1 to 3, How good and pleasant it is when God's people live together in unity. It is like Precious oil poured on the head, running down on the bird, running down on Aaron's bird, down on the collar of his robe. It is as if the Jew of Hermon were failing on Mount Zion. For there the Lord bestows his blessing, even life forevermore. Ang pagkakaisa sa loob ng iglesia ay isa pong pinagigiliwan ng Diyos. na kung saan doon niya ibubuhos ang anointing, doon niya ibubuhos ang blessing at mananatili ang buhay na pinagpalat sa gana sa loob ng iglesia kung mayroong pagkakaisa. At mangyayari lamang ito kung ang lahat ay strongly and accurately connected sa nagpapastor sa kanila, their spiritual covering, their spiritual father, so that the unity of the faith will happen. And those who are strongly and accurately connected to their spiritual father, their pastor, they will be his Sons and daughters na kasama niya bumubot. Kaya sabi, pag buhos po ng anointing, sa kay Aaron, bababa ito sa kanyang balbas, papunta sa kanyang balikat. When you speak about uh, shoulder, okay? When you speak about shoulder, it speaks of authority. Sa sino mang kasama ng kanilang pastor sa pagbuhat ng pasanin sa iglesia, sa pagmamahal sa kapwa at nagiging daan sa pagiging peacemaker para sa unity ng body of Christ, o pagkaka-isa sa loob ng iglesia, sila rin ay tatanggap 
ng pagpapala. Kung anong pagpapalang binuusan Diyos sa kanilang pastor, yun din ang pagpapalang kanilang natanggap. Kung sila may nakaanggala ng pastor, nakatanggap ng anointing, ganun din ang anointing na kanilang natatanggap. Oh, my friends. Ganito katindi ang pagpapala ng mga strongly and accurately connected sa kanilang pastor. And they have the right to access their inheritance. Number five, His work is to impart to us the knowledge of the Son of God until we all become mature in faith. Ayan ang pinag-uusapan. In verse 13, until we all reach unity in the faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God and become mature, attaining to the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. Watch me now. One of the major tasks of your pastor is to lead and bring you to maturity. And he can only do that if you allow him to equip you and to build your spirit strong. Nagkaunawaan tayo. Kaya nga hindi pwedeng hindi makialam talaga eh. Makikialam talaga ang pastor. At isa pa sa kanyang gagawin is to impart to us the knowledge of the Son of God until we all become mature in faith. Tingnan nyo ito, Hosea 4.6. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Because you have rejected knowledge, I will also reject you from being my priest. Since you have forgotten the law of your God, I will also forget your children. Nakita niyo, Diyos na mismo may sabi, My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Ang kakulangan ng kaalaman, pagsasabing lack of knowledge, ignorance. Bakit marami ignorante sa salita ng Diyos? Because they don't find time or they don't make time to listen to His Word. Bakit ignorante? Because they are rebels, and they do not recognize or acknowledge the authority that God had placed over their life. Sayang ko. Nag-church po kayo pagkatapos hindi po ninyo kinikilala ang nagpapastor sa inyo. Sayang. And I don't care, and God doesn't care, if you are 50 years, 40 years in the church, being a leader, but you are not submissive to your pastor, useless po yan. Maganda na ho na mayroong director nagkasabi sa inyo. At ngayong gabi, kung kinakausap kayo ng Diyos, mag-pray po kayo. Picturean nyo po ang mga biblical references natin ngayong gabi. At tingnan mo, gawin mo siyang salamin para sa sarili mo. Huwag mong gawin salamin yung iba. Yung salita ng Diyos ang gawin mong salamin because one of the function of God's Word is a mirror. Pag hindi ka nakaharap sa salamin, di mo nakikita ang dumi sa mukha mo. But the moment you face the mirror, you will see kung ano yung mga dumi sa mukha mo na dapat mong alisin. Gawin mong salamin ang salita ng Diyos ngayong gabi. Because of lack of knowledge, the people of God perish. Proverbs 24, 3 to 4, By wisdom a house is built, and by understanding it is established, and by knowledge, the realms are filled with the pearl precious and pleasant riches. Nakita nyo yung power ng knowledge? Receiving the knowledge of God will enable to bring and fill your life, fill your life with precious and pleasant riches. And the greatest riches of all riches is none, other, is none other than the Word of God. Because heaven and earth will pass away, but the Word of God will never pass away. The riches of this world will perish, but the Word of God will make you stand and will, will uh, make you stand and make you strong sa lahat ng pagsubok sa buhay na ito. Lastly, Galatians 4, 1 and 2. What I am saying is that as long as an ear is underage, it is no different from a slave. Maybe he owns the whole state. The ear is subject to guardians and trustees until the time set by his father. As I end, his spiritual maturity can only be done if you strongly and accurately connect, obey, submit, and honor, respect, and support your pastor. Ang sabi ni Pablo, ang sinasabi ko, hanggat ang tagapagmana ay bata, wala siya pinagkaiba sa alipin. Makinig kayo mabuti. In the spirit, if you are still a child, but sinasabing a child, immature, you are no different to a slave. Slave means unbeliever. A person who doesn't know God. Kaya maraming mananampalapaya dahil immature, ignorante sa salita ng Diyos. Wala silang pinagkaiba sa unbeliever. Although they receive Christ, although they have the title of so-called Christian, but Christianity or the life and characteristics of a Christian is not seen in their life. Why? Because it's not seen in their lives. Why? Because they are still immature. Anong gagawin? 
the ear, or the he owns the whole state. Kaya nga, kahit sabi mo mananampal, anak, anak ka na Diyos, mananampal tayo ta. Hindi mo ma-access because of immaturity. The ear, the ear is subject to guardians and trustees until the time set by, their, by his father. Kaya pinagpatiwala po tayo sa ating mga guardians, sa ating trustees, ibig sabihin, our spiritual father, our pastors, para tayo ay dalhin sa maturity. Because once a son, a child becomes a son, and a son becomes matured, then we will be able to access our spiritual inheritance na matagal nang inihanda ng Diyos sa atin bago pa tayo isilang. What is spiritual inheritance? Having access to the resources, having access to the provision, having access to the provision, having access to the power and presence of God in heaven. With this, mga kapatid, pagpalain tayong lahat ng Panginoon. Kung muli, picture ninyo yung ating mga biblical references and then make it as a mirror na kung saan gagawin natin siyang salamin para makita natin ang ating mga sarili. At kung ang Diyos pinangusap at nagsasabing anak, baguhin mo na ito, itigil mo na yan, itigil agad natin at baguhin upang tayo po ay kanyang pagpapalain. Your table will never run out of food. There will always be food at your table. And I pray that whatever you do, wherever you go, the Lord will prosper all the works of your hands. And beginning tonight, because we strongly and accurately connect to our spiritual father at all times, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May His face, may His face be shine upon you and give you peace together with your family. This is my declaration and decree in the almighty name of Jesus Christ and all the blessed people of God declare. Amen and amen and amen. Shalom!